Fixing this small mistake can turn your render from 15 minutes to 15 seconds. It took me so long to admit it, and it hurts to say, but PNG and JPEG? Well, at the end of this video, you'll learn all the skills you need to cut your render times in half, one fourth, one eighth, or even one sixteenth without seeing any loss in quality. I've watched copious amounts of Blender videos on optimizing render times and compiled all the information into this one video. Noise Threshold This is an error threshold that decides whether to continue sampling a pixel or not. The lower this number, the less noise at the cost of render times. But we can combat this noise with a denoiser. If you have an outdoor scene or one with access to a lot of light, not just from a window, then you can set this noise threshold quite high, all the way up to even 0.5 if your scene is lit very well. However, I wouldn't do anything over 0.2 for most cases. If the light in your scene is coming from one emission shader, or a light from a window, then I wouldn't set this threshold over 0.1. Aim for somewhere around 0.01 to 0.1. The lower noise threshold is our devastating sample rate. You don't want to go too low with this or you'll see artifacts, but too high and you're rendering for the entire day. What do you set this at? As with most tips in this tutorial, it's scene dependent. But if your scene is well lit or uses an HDR for lighting, then you can bring this sample rate pretty damn low. 10 if you're crazy. Here's an image I rendered with 4096 samples and 10 samples. Can you spot the difference? In most cases, you don't need to go anything over 1024. Even with dark scenes, there's alternative methods to reduce artifacts in the final render. General rule of thumb is the darker your scene, the more noise that will be created, just like maxing out the ISO on a camera, giving that film grain look. Now that we bumped up the noise in our scene, we have to take it out using a fancy denoiser built in with Blender. Now for the type of denoiser. This depends on your GPU. If you have a newer NVIDIA GPU, then consider using optics. If you're using any older GPU, Open Image Denoiser is the way to go. However, watching videos on people with newer GPUs, they say that even with the top end systems, Open Image Denoiser usually looks better. Try it out though. Now onto lights. Not light paths, lights. For my testing, checking light tree had visually no difference in the image at all, and took off a few seconds. So just disable it. The most important thing here is the max light bounces. For most scenes, you don't need anything over 16, even indoor scenes. If I'm in a pinch though, I use the built-in presets and select fast global illumination. Also, when choosing light pass, ask yourself the following questions. How much light in my scene is indirect, meaning it comes from the light bouncing off another surface instead of the light directly? How much reflective surfaces are in my scene? If you have a mirror in your scene, then setting this value up would be a good idea. Or if you're crazy and you have a mirror pointed in another mirror, then you might want to bump this up all the way to 64. Check out this tutorial to see how I did it. Next, does my scene have any transmission shaders? So water, glass, and stuff like that. If not, then turn this to zero. If you got no volume shaders in your scene, you'll know if you do, then turn this to zero. If you do, three should be fine unless you're layering volumes on top of each other. And finally, transparency. If you don't have any image textures with transparency in your scene, like decals and plants, then set this to zero. If you do, set this to three unless you have transparent textures overlapping. Okay, now this next step is probably the most important one for the whole video. Fixing this small mistake can turn your render from 15 minutes to 15 seconds. Go to your system settings in your edit, preferences, then system and make sure you're on CUDA and only have your GPU selected, not your GPU and your CPU. I just found out that I was using my GPU and CPU for the past couple years and always ask myself why my renders were so slow. If you use both your GPU and your CPU for rendering, then it splits up the rendering tasks equally between both of them. And your GPU is generally a lot stronger at handling these graphics than your CPU. That's all for the heavy lifting. The rest of these tips will make your render even faster, but at a much smaller scale. However, looking at it over multiple frames, you can save hundreds of minutes off your final render time. In sampling under advanced settings, make sure to turn on viewport. What this does is scatters the noise distribution on your image and chooses to render certain areas of the image differently than others to prioritize ones that need more time than others. This changes zero, none, zilch quality in the image and decreases render times quite a bit, especially in the viewport. If you enable this for animations though, you'll notice some flickering artifacts. In the performance tab, make sure that you're using tiling with a large tile size. Unless you're rendering with your CPU, then go for a smaller pixel size around 64 to 256 pixels. This next setting is more for animations. Increases build time on the first frame, but decreases render times for all the following frames. Persistent data. If a part of your image stays the same throughout the render, it saves that data in Blender so it doesn't have to render it again. This is helpful for animations with large number of objects in the scene that don't move throughout the animation too much. Now for optimizing your scene directly. Instead of just checking off different settings, actually changing the complexity of your scene will make the most difference. 
texture size. If you're not close up and personal to your texture in your final render, then there's no reason to have such a high resolution. I would never go above 2K unless I'm using an HDRI that's seen in my final render. A really helpful feature that Blender has built into the interface is the Simplify checkbox in the Render tab. Enabling this allows you to choose a max texture resolution for your render and your viewport separately. Before we continue, please consider subscribing. I'll be coming out with more Blender tutorials and showcases soon that you can't find anywhere else on YouTube. My goal is to create content I always wished existed when I was trying to learn Blender. So please comment down below what kind of videos you want to see. Let's talk resolution. The ultimate game changer to add more detail and fidelity to any render is increasing the image resolution. Thankfully, changing this parameter is pretty predictable. Usually, doubling the resolution will double your render times. So consider optimizing your scene with all the settings I mentioned in this video, then increasing your resolution. This will surprisingly be much faster and higher quality than if you try to get the same amount of detail through increasing the sample rate and light paths. If you're somebody who creates new materials with every object and ends up with an abundance of unused materials, then go to File, Cleanup, and Recursive Unused Data Blocks. All those unused materials take a valuable data and memory, slowing down your render. So your render is optimized as much as it can go without turning it to trash. What now? We can still go further, and that's with your output format. If you render images using PNG, consider switching to OpenEXR. EXR DWAA has much lower file sizes than PNG and provides a quality unmatched to PNG. Unless you need to render out the alpha channel, JPEG, and OpenEXR is the way to go. It took me so long to admit it, and it hurts to say, but PNG and JPEG? Well, I can't tell the difference. Final takeaway. If you really want to change the speed of your render, then upgrading your hardware is the best way. Comes at a cost, but worth it if you use Blender for a job. Or just need to spit out high quality art in short amounts of time. Just remember to keep in mind that all of this doesn't help if you don't know how to create stunning visuals in Blender. If you want to see how I create stunning waterfalls like the ones you saw in this video, click here.